what is up everybody it's been a minute and it's because of several reasons which i will get into i've been recording or wanting to record a video for a while now this is my third attempt at recording this video and that's because the first time is the same reason why i don't sound too great right now which is why i haven't made a video is about 13 days ago i contracted the coof and um it actually wasn't that bad it only lasted like a couple days but i managed to catch something else about a week ago uh, it's not that I, I don't know what it is but i'm sick as fuck still but yeah and then the second time i was recording this i uh just i kind of tried to push through the coughing but then my phone started going off and it fucked everything up so this is the third take of this video with that said now it's been kind of a plus that i actually wasn't able to record this video <coughs> excuse me um when i wanted to to because more stuff has happened and it's given me more to talk about if i'll be able to talk about it so we are living in pretty strange times right now so that's it's at this to say the least to say uh man it's been something so i have a little bit of a list right here just bullet points I'm, i don't have a full script right now i never have but at least i have bullet points instead of just doing my videos off brick like usual because then they get really messy so first we're going to talk about everything going on with our quote-unquote friends over in the russian federation um <clears throat> something interesting i've noticed is a lot of people are starting to say like oh russia is regressing into a soviet like country again um i think the term regressing is quite funny to use because frankly it never really left that state uh, it kind of just changed names. That's basically it. Nothing's really ever fucking changed. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> Everyone's going to act like it, this is basically completely fucking vindicated everything I've been saying about Russia for probably four or five years at this point. And that's, I mean, I, I think a lot of, I've talked about this a lot in my other videos. I, my first two, I think I took, or maybe it was the first one I know, or maybe the third one. I don't remember the order. Um, I kind of talked about how I felt about Russia and China, and I don't want to do them to death, though they are going to be warranted to be mentioned in this video because of the topic. Um, simply put, though, I, Russia is an Asianic place. It's not Western. I don't know why people people seem to think. That, like the collapse of the Soviet Union that like westernized Russia Russia never westernized and it never will westernize it's not a western country and the people in there are not western it's that simple <clears throat> it's not a western country I don't know why people haven't gotten this to their heads or why everyone likes to act like it one day you know Vadim and his vodka drinking family who live in some shithole commie block are going to become like normal Europeans it's never going to happen it never will and sitting there acting like it will happen is a pipe dream. <coughs> it's a pipe dream. Um, but with everything going on there, and talking about how it's regressed to a Soviet-like state, <coughs> I would be inclined to agree that it has definitely been more open since the start of this quote-unquote special operation. That it's been much more transparent about how it is but to say that this is a regression is foolish because it is never really changed it's kind of just like ripping the veil off one's face the face never changed it just was covered that's it um and i've talked about that when it came with the dugan stuff and i think that's pretty self-explanatory i hope it is at this point uh Russia basically just kind of used the collapse of the Soviet Union to be like, hey, look, we're not communists anymore, but the same Bolshevik ideology rules that land, and it probably always will, unfortunately, but whatever. And then, uh, since we're on that topic, we can move to Ukraine, because it's in the same realm of geopolitic. Now, this video is about strange times, but it's also me going to be kind of ranting and talking about stuff I like to talk about. So, uh, you'll see a lot of people on the right who have just been going fucking, like, these kind of MAGA people who have just been going fucking over, over, you know, just, we're giving too much money to Ukraine, blah, blah, blah. 
You know, it's kind of funny because these same MAGA people, where was all this energy when we were dumping how much, and we still do dump how much money every year to Israel? And for what? You can say what you want, but all the wars we've had recently in the last two decades in the Middle East, how, how is Israel, who basically benefited from all those wars, they never fucking militarily contributed to any of those things? On the other hand, I'm not going to, whether this is good or bad, this is a kind of irrelevant. I'm just simply saying, despite not being in NATO, Ukraine sure fucking contributed. I, I do find that funny, but for some reason, they're more pissed off about us giving money against the must savior Putin, who was far from anything close to that. But, like, hey, we can just dump all this money to, to our we greatest ally in the Middle East, who's done nothing but fucking shoot us in the feet and aid China and Russia, for that matter, forever, relatively speaking, since it's been around. I, I digress. I just I think that's kind of funny. You get these Don Jr. type people out there that will say shit like that, and it's like, dude, really? Because I guess dumping all that money to Israel was... That was okay, though, despite them constantly fucking us over. Um, and then you'll get people who... To his credit, I like him. I'm not. I'm not gonna fucking condemn him for this, like other people I know have, given they're a bit more radical than I am on a lot of things, and I don't agree with them a lot on a lot of things either. I'm not gonna condemn Tucker Carlson for this, but I think it's funny <clears throat> that he'll get people like complete fucking idiots, like Douglas McGregor, who's a fucking moron, dude. But this this is the same guy. Everyone wants to take him seriously now. This is the same Doug McGregor that when Trump bombed Soleimani was like chimping out on TV about how that was going to be the start of World War III, which never fucking happened, by the way. Because Doug McGregor just likes to sit here and think any sort of American dominance on the fucking planet automatically means that we're basically like bending over, pulling our pants down, letting everyone around just take a hit. It's fucking ridiculous. Or people like Tulsi Gabbard, who is just a complete fucking moron. I, I don't feel like talking more about her because that would just make me angry. Anybody that takes Tulsi Gabbard, especially, but even Doug McGregor seriously, probably does not have any understanding on how fucking geopolitics works. And the reason I bring this up is there's this common thing you'll see only on Tucker Carlson's show, despite my feelings about Tucker personally, which are usually positive, is that like we should just stop it stop supporting Ukraine because Russia's winning and that's all he says uh, I don't know who the fuck believes that but you're an idiot and I'll explain and I'm like that side I'll explain why my my take is correct instead of just saying that this is happening and that's why because I feel like saying it to say Russia's winning is I, I don't really know how you measure that success because what they occupy x amount of the country they, their offensives are not breaking through on anything they haven't actually managed to make substantial change that they wanted <clears throat> so i don't know how you can constitute that as a russian victory i'm not going to say ukraine's winning i'm not because i don't lie in fact if, if we're speaking in broad terms right now nobody's winning but i digress to sit here and say Oh, you know, Russia holds X amount of territory in Ukraine. So, just stop supporting them. Let, let, let them take it. And this will kind of move on to my next bullet point after I cough my fucking brains out. So, give me one second. <coughs> Which is bullet point number two. Everything going on with China. Yes. The Red Menace in the East is I like to re reference them as. So, the funny thing with this is which is why I'm glad I didn't record this video when I felt like and I got sick, is a lot of shit has happened in the last week with China pertaining to Taiwan. Um, now, I'll be the first to say I do not care at all for Nancy Pelosi. I think that's quite obvious for my politics. But I think, and this kind of goes with what I'm saying here, I'll, this will all tie back into what I was just talking about with the whole like MAGA crowd and the Tucker Carlson crowd. All this will tie in. But at first, I want to talk about what's going on in Taiwan. Listen, personally, when it comes to what happens in Taiwan, I really don't give a single fuck about Taiwan itself. Unfortunately for us, the chip thing is a problem, which is why we should retain it. But 
to say like I care about Taiwan, honestly, I don't. I don't really give a fuck about Taiwan. However, if that means China takes a loss and not being able to have Taiwan, I'm okay with that because fuck China, and that goes without saying. But this entire thing has come up with the Pelosi thing, and I think she's an idiot. She could have did better, obviously. That's not how often that's up for debate. But you'll get these people, like I was just talking about, who said the same thing about you know the whole Russia and Ukraine situation, who say, you know, on one hand, Pelosi is manipulating... You know, she's she's edging China to basically attack us. But on the other hand, it's like, we need to be more dominant in the world. But d don't go there and make China angry. So the, these people say how we, America needs to be strong and it needs to show dominance. But then when we do it, well, actually, that's, that's not what we're supposed to be doing because we're just pushing Russia and China together. Yeah, newsflash, retards, I don't know if any of you know anything about geopolitics. Any person who does can tell you this. They've always been together. They don't really like each other, but we have, a, we have a common enemy, and that common enemy is us, and that won't change. They both hate the Western world because neither of them are Western countries. And saying you're acting like we're going to be able to pull Russia in our grasp and get them away from China is fucking foolish. For, I mean, you get these idiots out here that think that the world just works the way they want it to because that would be ideal, which is ridiculous. Um, <laughs> China is an enemy. Russia is an enemy of the Western world, because I'm, I'm a Western chauvinist. I think this has been clearly demonstrated. I'm not an interventionist by any means, but I'm also not a fucking isolationist by any means, because, frankly, as nice as isolationism sounds, I don't want to sound like a liberal and be like, it's current year, but it is 2022. You can't really be isolationist in a world like this. It's just not that possible. It's not, unfortunately. We can be self-sufficient, and I, I, I advocate that we strive for that, to sit here and be like, hey, we should just be isolationist. It, it's not practical. It's not practical. Unfortunately, it is not practical, and to act like it is is delusional. And that moves on with that. <laughs> what I'm saying is, you get these people who will say, you know, we need to be more dominant, and then we take dominance. Well, that doesn't count. Okay. And let's talk about, you know, these fucking propaganda videos. That, you know, the CCP puts out of the PLA doing all this shit and saying, oh, we're not prepared to, to fight because we have trainees in the Air Force. And yeah, about that. Listen, obviously that's not good. Obviously, you won't find me arguing against that. However, to act like that because China puts out a fucking training video that like we're done. We're just we're done. It's over. It's over. Uh, th this demoralization it's a demoralization propaganda I, I really would say so because it's fucking ridiculous it's a training video you think we can't put those together because we do they don't blow up on the news like that but we do we put them out all the fucking time go look at any of the military branches actual videos when it's not like you know the, the air force having some gay dude on there and it's it's much the same on par minus the three six mafia music that the uh, Chinese put in the video but to say that, like, oh, we're going to lose a war to China because China put up this excellent video, even though China hasn't fought a war on a light scale at all since fucking they tried to invade Vietnam or actually hasn't fought a war since they fought us in Korea is atrocious. It's atrocious because it's stupid. <clears throat> and it's it's demoralizing. It's, it's, dare I say, almost as bad as acting like nothing's wrong yeah things are wrong in this country but i feel like you know acting like nothing's wrong but then when you simply say everything's fucked and, you know well i even try anymore we need to be dominant but we can't because i said so everything's fucked it's over that's that's ridiculous and maga boomers and people who watch like tucker carlson are starting to come in this camp and i, I don't know why i think i mean i know why but i mean i simply gotta say like, what do you think just because if Orange Man gets back in, which would be nice, uh, you, I'll, I'll definitely be a fan of that, but do you think just because if he gets back in, all these fucking problems we're going to have are just going to fade away, or that any of these problems only started to exist on January 20th of 2021, we didn't have gays and trannies in the military before? I mean, this is fucking absurd. And I just, I don't understand why these people get off on this. It's ridiculous and I'm kind of sick of seeing it
because it's starting to become more and more common among the like MAGA crowd. You'll see that on Don Jr.'s like Instagram. If you go in his comments, you'll have all these fucking boomers, man, and these Gen X idiots, and they're out here, you know, oh, China will kick our ass in a war, and like a bunch of laughing emojis, like, it, it, what exactly about that? If you're supposed to be a nationalist, as these people like to claim they are, which honestly, I, I, I really can't say they are, as much as I, I align with them, and I'm a nationalist, but I mean, there's things that any nationalist who is a serious actor, politically speaking, or just anyone who's an actual nationalist would would not find it funny that our military could get their asses kicked if that was the case. But, you know, the, we live in strange times. Like I said, everything's upside down in this world, apparently. Um, I don't know. I do not know, my friends. I'm spitballing here because I'm just ranting, but it's this, like... This shit's fucking crazy, dude. You have all these people out here, <clears throat> basically just, they say they're like, you know, like, it's almost like, you know, everyone's still on their side of their political spectrum, but they're, not, they're just picking and choosing their talking points. And this is kind of like my point I'll say lastly about the military thing before I move on to the next topic. As much as I'm not an interventionist and you won't hear me cheering on Dick Cheney and George Bush and all those people from the 2000s. I will say one thing about there was one benefit that we have over China and Russia and that interventionist policy did help. And that's no matter how many gays and trainees you have in the military. One plus America has had because those policies that are, are we've been at war. We roughly have a war every decade. And one thing that's from a military's perspective and from a real politics perspective, it's kept our, our bearings oiled, if you will. It, it has kept the American military, I can't even speak, fuck me. It has kept the American military at the top of its game, and it's always trying to improve because it's constantly been fighting. It has not allowed the military to sit back and kind of become lazy. Unfortunately... I, and I guess fortunately, it depends how you look at this. We haven't been in a war in a while, but unfortunately, because which is the fortunate part. The unfortunate part of that is we're becoming soft again, as we're seeing. The reason why, you can say about the politics in this country, and that is true. However, a good reason is why we're having so many issues like that in the military is because they have nothing better to fucking do because they haven't been at war, realistically speaking, in a fucking decade. The 2010s. I mean, we had special operations doing shit against ISIS and all that, but realistically speaking, we haven't been at a state of somewhat war since early 2011 in Afghanistan. Let alone high scale, that hasn't happened since, I'd say, the surge in Iraq back in 2007. It's been relatively calm, dare I say, since then, which is a good example, like during the Afghan pullout, which was a fucking disaster, when those... 13 service members died as tragic as it was there were no tragedy on the other losses we had we kept hearing about it cause that's the first time we had a mass casualty event to, from combatants in forever because we haven't been at war and i think that's one of the things we have over russia and china is frankly russia russia's always in, in china too really do a shit military doctrines but at least and they haven't been as war, at war as much as us at least for russia's case though they, they've been in some conflicts particularly in Chechnya, then they had the little skirmish in Georgia. I don't know if you could really even call that a war because they kind of just rolled through there. And I, I guess if you want to call it a war in Syria, though realistically speaking, was kind of just slaughtering people with, with their air force. So that kind of showed with their corruption and everything else once they decided to launch this attack on Ukraine. But the thing is, China hasn't had a war in, in general in since the 70s, but they haven't actually fought a near peer since they fought us in Korea in, in the fucking early 50s. So to sit here and say, oh yeah, China made a training video. That's dandy and all, but what does that accomplish? Okay, that's a cool training video. What are they going to do, though, once shit hits the fan? Uh, hopefully we never have to find out, but this demoralization thing we're kind of getting at is just... It's, it's getting old, and I'm also going to move on because I'm beating a dead horse. I've been talking about this for like 15 minutes. Um, so other things with strange times is uh, bad actors, politically speaking, in this 
in our movement. I'm not going to talk about the whole country and the whole spectrum because, frankly, anybody on the left is pretty much a bad actor, <laughs> whether, they, whether it's directly or indirectly. Um, I'm speaking on people in this spirit, particularly the nationalist, paleoconservatives kind, but really the right wing in general, the competent right wing, dare I say. Um, I'm not going to get back on America first. I, that movement's kind of just a shit show. I'm sure anybody who actually watches this kind of keeps up with that news. I don't think i got to talk too much about what the fuck that's turned into. It's funny, I'll say that. Um, but that whole kind of sphere is people like that. You know, Alex Jones is on trial right now. I'm not going to give opinions about that. I'm just going to say it's probably a show. And do I think it's necessarily right? Uh, I don't not going to say, do I care? Uh, not really, because Alex Jones himself is a sellout. Uh, you know, it's so simple, and that's what I'm going to tell when it comes to bad actors, is we've always talked on the right, this part of the right, about the issue with Israel and other countries as well, but particularly they always focus on Israel, which is a good thing, because that's our biggest problem when it comes to this, but uh, when it comes to foreign lobbying, and this is when I say, you know, for some reason people don't talk about this one, even though it's important, but, you know, Chinese foreign lobbying as well as a problem, as well as Russian foreign lobbying, because we're seeing a lot of these guys that had, like, sure, it was only one, but a lot of these guys had, like, a Russian donor, and we thought nothing of it. And a lot of these, and the, of course, in the moment this uh, war starts, then they start appearing in RT, and they're basically saying the same shit the Kremlin's saying verbatim. As it comes to this point, if someone's getting money from a foreign government or just a foreign source in general, and they're supposed to be working for the best interests of America, even if it's an allied nation, quote-unquote, uh, it's probably best just not to trust them because any nationalist politician shouldn't be getting money from a different country. I think that should go without saying, but again, strange times that for some reason this goes over people's heads. Um, a couple other crazy things. Uh, the Balkans almost went 1990s mode last week. Apparently Serbia is chimping out again. Not really a surprise. I don't really got much to say about that besides the fact that, I mean, it's Serbia. Are we surprised at all? all right. It's fucking Serbia. I mean, I, I don't really care who Kusum goes to. It realistically is Serbian territory, but fuck Serbia. So I, it's probably best to say where it is because honestly, I can't see Albania and Serbia having a border next to each other and that going well and seeing as Albania is for some reason now in NATO we don't really need that especially because if something ever happened and Russia ever manages to recover that <laughs> will become a flashpoint soon I'll I put money on it if it got to that point and with that we're going to give some updates on this channel and the direction it's taking so Obviously, I'm, I'm sick. I'm sure that's kind of been obvious to this point. Um, once I start feeling better, I'd like to start making content consistently. I was going to start doing that, and then I got sick. So you can probably look for that. I don't know how long it's going to take, but once videos, not this one, but the video I will make after this one, whatever it may will be, you can probably start looking forward to more scheduled, quote-unquote, content. I won't have the schedule, but it should become more frequent and probably better pro like quality production wise because this one's going to be really bad because I'm just kind of coughing through it but I'm not recording this a fourth time um, and that's all I really got to say about that if you guys want me to talk about something please by all means leave it in the comments I would gladly talk about it if it's something I've talked about before I can reference you to the previous video unless you want me to go into more detail about it or if it's a new topic and I feel it's worthy of talking about I will gladly talk about it. With that said, I'd like to thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next video. Goodbye.